Good morning. Perfect. Thank you all for your patience in waiting for the last bus to arrive. Settle down now, everybody in their seats. A sea of blue and green with a little bit of white in front. Perfect. My name is Pat Damer. I'm the Acting Director of the Office of Science. And on behalf of the Department of Energy and the Office of Science, we welcome you here today to the Grand Championship of the 2013 National Science Bowl. This year, more than 14,000 students participated starting very early this year. Uh, they come from 49 states, the District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico. Those of you here today, your 115 teams of middle school and high school students are in the top 4% of those who competed nationwide. So congratulations to all of you. Our finalists today are from the middle school teams, Creekside Middle School in Carmel, Indiana. Raise your hands, kids. Very good. And Tacoma Park Middle School from Silver Spring, Maryland. The locals, raise your hands. Very good. In the high school championships, we have North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics from Durham, North Carolina. Hands up. Very good kids. And Mira Loma High School in Sacramento, California. Congratulations to all of you for making it to the finals here in the National Building Museum. Before we begin today's uh, competitions, I just want to take a moment to recognize all those who worked so hard to make today happen. We have about 125 local volunteers working this weekend's event, and we have about 5,000 volunteers who supported the regional competitions. I also want to recognize all of the parents, teachers, and coaches for the roles that they played in the lives of our competitors. Special thanks go to Jan Tyler. Where's Jan? There's Jan. Jan managed uh, every detail of the finals competition this weekend, and she also oversaw all of the regional events, making sure that every, everything happened on time and in the place they should. Please join me in a well-deserved round of applause for everybody who helped make this happen. Excellent. So this year we have a brand new staging for the event, which is trendy and upscale. Uh, we also have in the back of the hall, where you'll be eating lunch, the Office of Science traveling booth. And that uh, contains a lot of information on the Office of Science and also the 10 laboratories that the Office of Science manages for the Department of Energy. Uh, I urge you to walk around and take a look at that. Um, as you're eating lunch, uh, you know, before, during, or after lunch. I have to say that one of those laboratories was my home for more than 20 years when I was doing research. It's, they are wonderful places to work. Uh, when you go on to college and, and start uh, your college career, you can actually go to those laboratories as a summer intern. And even later on, you might want to think of your career there. So walk by, take a peek at what's going on. Um, now I'd like to welcome today's MC. David Zarin to the podium, and we will officially begin today's competition. Good luck to all of you. Thank you, Pat. It's nice to be back here. Is everybody having a good time this weekend here in Washington? Isn't it great? If you've been coming back year after year, you know that the stage here, the set, is a lot different than we've been used to, as Pat was saying. It has a Star Wars look to it. It just has a great look. And if you've never been in this building before, I know the first time I walked in here, I thought, this is just like the Parthenon. Not a bad spot to come if you're having a final competition. You know, I don't know about you, but I was so happy when it rained this morning. I'm a television weatherman. And yesterday morning when the sun was out, 
all the meteorological signs were there that it, the rain was going to start late last night and extend into tomorrow morning, this morning. So when a forecast comes true and you're a weatherman, you give thanks. I have ruined more outdoor wedding receptions than you can count. People say, hey Dave, why don't you come out and help me shovel some of that partly cloudy off my driveway? You got a pretty thick skin when you're a weatherman, but I hope you made it here easily enough this morning that you have a safe trip back to where you have come from to join us here in Washington. Let me welcome you to the 23rd annual National Science Bowl. We started back in 1991. Back then, a blackberry was still a fruit. A tweet was still just a sound that a bird made. Spam was still a canned meat. And bazinga wasn't yet in our vocabulary. Thank you, Dr. Sheldon Cooper. Since 1991, 1,800 high schools and over 1,000 middle schools have competed in the National Science Bowl. 200,000 young people like yourself have in these last 23 years go, gone through this experience. We have no Nobel laureates yet among that group, but it is just a matter of time. There are 575 of you here today, as Pat said, representing 69 high schools and 46 middle schools. And we're especially happy that we have 22 brand new high schools here and 25 new middle schools. Could we have all of the new folks stand up so we can recognize you? New teams, first time at the National Science Bowl. That's great. You look terrific. How many of you are making your first trip ever to Washington? First trip ever to Washington. I know from reading your bios that Nate Peters, who attends Matsu Career and Technical High School, is coming to the Science Bowl here, and this is the first time he has ever been outside of Alaska. Nate, I hope you're enjoying the nation's capital. And you know that, thank you. And you know, you just missed the cherry blossoms. About 10 days ago, they peaked. Of course, we thought they were going to peak about three weeks ago, but we meteorologists all believed that groundhog up in Pennsylvania who said we would get an early spring. It was not to be. And as all of my colleagues said, we are no longer going to trust that lying rodent up in Punxsutawney. That is it. I hope you've made some new friends over the past few days that you add them to your Facebook. And one of the great things about being at National Science Bowl is the connections you'll continue to have. Schools come here year after year after year, and a lot of the letters that we get, now the emails and the tweets say that this is one of the highlights of your life. This is a souvenir experience. You'll never forget this. Maybe it was the great food, which a lot of you love, Maybe it's staying out there at the 4-H Center, even though it's not your bed at home and it might be a little uncomfortable. This upset your routine, but that's good. You're meeting new people, you're getting new experiences. Maybe you're f experiencing an epiphany that changes your life. You're thinking of a new career because of what happened here at the National Science Bowl. And no matter what happened here, whether you finished at the top, whether you're taking home a trophy or not, because you won at your regional competitions, you are hometown heroes. People are going to be watching you on YouTube, and when you get home, I hope you're properly feeded. Give yourselves a hand. You are all champions, all champions. I want to add my personal thanks to Jan Tyler. I come back year after year because Jan Tyler says to do it, and I say, yes, Jan, because she is a very disciplined and convincing woman. Jan is our mother superior, and I hope you've had a chance to talk with her over the past couple of days. If you have any issues, Jan takes care of them, and Jan, uh, you're just terrific. Jan, where is she? She's right over there. Thanks for all you do. You know, I mentioned some of you have been here year after year after year. In our past 23 years, the schools that have been here the most, 14 times, count them, are Mira Loma, Mississippi School for Math and Science, and Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Are you three here? Let's see you. Stand up so we can see these 
championship teams. Miraloma, Mississippi, and Thomas Jefferson. There they are. Our middle school competition has gone on not as long. In the past 12 years, the schools that have been here the most, Albuquerque Academy, nine years, the Van Antwerp Middle School in New York, eight years, and the Lux Middle School, seven years. Would the three of you stand up, please? Lux, Van Antwerp, there they are, and Albuquerque Academy. We've got some great coaches out there. I'm sure you all think your coach is the best, and that's the way you should. The coaches that has been here the most, the Miraloma coach, James Hill, is here for his 14th year. Mr. Hill, where are you? Mr. Hill, thank you. What a great standard you set for us all. Before we start our competition, I always like to tell you the things that I find in your bios that were especially amusing <laughs> and impressive. We have a brother and sister team here, Victoria and Christopher Pennington from the Northwest Early College High School in Texas. Where are our brother and sister? Are they here? They may be the first brother and sister team we've had in our history. And not only are you talented in science, you have so many other skills. Ash K. Rajagopal from Lincoln East High School in Nebraska, his fourth time here, is also the National Geography B champ in the middle schools. Ash K., where are you? Congratulations, young man. And from the Mission San Jose High School in California, Krishna Bharathala, was a semifinalist in the Je Jeopardy Team Teen Tournament. I remember seeing him on television. Where is Krishna? Are you out there? Right there. Thank you. Some of you have better senses of humor than Conan O'Brien did the other night at the Correspondence Dinner. You guys have great lines. A lot of you, it turns out, are here for more gustatory than cerebral reasons. Moritz Lang of Pullman High School in Pullman, Washington says, he does enjoy spending time with his teammates, but actually he just likes eating all the great Indian and Korean food that their mothers cook. I like your honesty. And speaking of food and other things, Ian Collins tells me that he likes to go for long walks on the beach in Parkersburg, West Virginia. <laughs> Must be a lake there. His teacher, Lisa Berry, his coach, who has been teaching for 28 years and a coach all those years, Ms. Berry, thank you, probably influenced the other fact he shared with me since her favorite show is The Big Bang Theory Ian Collins quoted a line from Sheldon Cooper, he too has no problem believing that it is not butter. If you watch the show, you remember that line. There are some interesting talents that you have. Carolina Fiegelman from the Baldwin School of Puerto Rico says she is very proud of her ability to lick her elbow. <laughs> Carolina, if it gets really, really dull up here, we might ask you to come out and demonstrate that. At the Los Alamos High School in New Mexico, Aaron Bao says he enjoys sharpening pencils and disturbingly throwing rocks off cliffs. We will give him the benefit of the doubt and trust that he is just studying parabolic trajectories for his next game of Angry Birds. This guy, I like your style, Rishabh Singh, of West Windsor Plainsboro High School in New Jersey, says that he is possibly the most interesting man in the world and puts the stud in study. Like that. <laughs> All right. And from Lexington High School in Massachusetts, Lexington is the reigning champ. They won last year. Maybe that accounts for this. Zarag Jalil says that he spends his time contemplating his superiority over the inferior classes of the animal kingdom when it comes to playing chess. 
He hopes that somebody reading his biography in today's program will be someone of great influence and power because he would like to nominate himself as the next Secretary of Energy. <laughs> Humble young man. <laughs> and then there is Saish Rao of Illinois Math and Science Academy who wishes that he becomes such a legend as a surgeon or a researcher in his own time that he will be choice Y in a multiple choice question read during the final round of the 2095 National Science Bowl. <laughs> nice legacy. And lastly, there's Kevin Lee of University High School in Irvine, California, who hopes, like a lot of you, to find a solution to the world's energy problems and the reason why the Lakers keep losing even though they outspend everyone else by a wide margin. Kevin, I understand your pain. We're about to get started here, and uh, I'm quite fascinated by the fact that here we are. This is the Department of Energy, the Office of Science. That's a great job. I asked if there was a light here on the podium. They gave me one of these. Human power. It lasts for a couple seconds here. Thank you for that prop. All right. Before we start our competition, would like to recognize the division team challenge winners. On Friday, all of the high school teams participated in the division team challenge science activity. The number one ranked team from each of the eight divisions is going to get $500 for science supplies for their schools, and we would like the winning teams to stand and be recognized when I call their names. Congratulations to all of you. Firstly, from the Arrhenius Division, the winner is the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School of Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky, could you stand, please? $500 for your school. Well done. Next, the Bromery Division's winner is the Blue Valley West High School from Overland Park, Texas. Blue Valley, where are you? The Curie Division winner is from Austin, Texas. That is the Liberal Arts and Science Academy. Liberal Arts, $500 for you. Over there. The Darwin Division winner is in today's finals. The North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics from Durham, North Carolina. Where are you? We'll be seeing them on stage very shortly. The Einstein Division winner from Columbus, Mississippi is one of our longest playing members, the Mississippi School for Math and Science. Mississippi, where are you? Nice to have you guys back. The winner of the Fermi Division is Pascal High School from Fort Worth, Texas. Pascal, the third Texas winner there. Where are you? Right there, gentlemen. $500 for you, nice job. Two more winners. The Galileo Division winner is the Glastonbury High School team from Connecticut. Glastonbury, where are you? Over there in green. And lastly, the Hypatia Division winner hails from the Gatton Academy of Math and Science in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I hear some hoots and hollers, where are they? There they are. Congratulations on a job well done. You know, for the past 13 years, National Science Bowl alumni have been coming here to the National Science Bowl and working as volunteers. You've probably seen them around. They do a number of things here. They serve as competition officials. Most importantly, they're role models. Hopefully you too will come back one day. This gets in your blood. And if you come back to Washington, maybe we'll put you to work. This year we have 23 alumni in attendance. Two of them are up front. They'll be moderating this morning's uh, questioning. Two will be stage and rule judges, and several others will serve as judges throughout the room. Could we have all 23 of our National Science Bowl alumni please stand so we can give you a nice round of applause. Many of them up front here, right where they should be. If you want a testimonial to this, just look at the amount of service they've provided to us. On to the competition we go. 
We started with 46 middle schools and 69 high schools. We are down to the final two middle school teams. As Pat was saying, the Tacoma Park Middle School from nearby Silver Spring, which is undefeated in double elimination, and Creekside Middle School from Carmel, Indiana, with one loss in double elimination. In the high school competition, we have the North Carolina School for Science and Math, which is undefeated in double elimination. One loss, our other competitor, the team from Mira Loma. Let's wish all the teams good luck. I'm about to turn the microphone over now to our two moderators, Adam Matthews, who was here in 1995 and 1997, and Dean Jones, who came here back in 1992. Gentlemen, you always do a fantastic job. Take it away. All right, thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to welcome our two high school finalists to the stage. Uh, first, Team A, Mira Loma High School. Please take the stage, Mira Loma. <laughs> and playing Mira Loma, we have Team B, the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. NCSSM, please come to the stage. Once again, before we start, uh, please turn your cell phones off if you turn them on during the break. And uh, again, we ask you please be considerate and play along silently in your head during the competition, um, but do not disrupt the cont contestants on stage. All right, thank you very much, Mira Loma and North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. At this time, we'd like to um, test the buzzers and have you introduce yourselves to us. We're gonna start at the left side of the stage and work our way across. Um, please buzz in, give us your name, your year in school, um, where you're going to college next year, and what you intend to major in. A3. Hi, I'm Daniel Shen. I'm a sophomore at Mariloma High School. I would like to go to Caltech, and if so, I would like to major in aerospace engineering. Thank you. A2. Hi, I'm Jack Garev. I'm a freshman. Uh, I would like to go to MIT, and um, I want to major in computer science. Thank you. A Captain. Hi, I'm a sock at Thuggerwall. Um, I'll be attending Caltech in the fall, and I'll be majoring in chemistry. Thank you. A1. Hi, I'm Zarad Trahan. I'm going to, I'm a senior at Miraloma, and I'm going to MIT next year, where I'll be majoring in bio. Thank you. B1. I'm, I'm Calvin Dang. I'm uh, going to be attending Harvard <coughs> College next year, and I'll probably be majoring in either math and or computer science. Thank you. B Captain. I'm Tejas Andresen. Um, I want to study bioengineering at MIT next year, um, and I'm a senior. Thank you. <coughs> B2. I'm Sammy Liu, I'm a junior, and I hope to go to MIT and major in math or computer science. B3. Um, I'm Yu Wang, a senior, and uh, I'll be doing business at the University of Pennsylvania next year. <laughs> <laughs> no shame, B3, no shame. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, do either team have questions before we begin? Well, best of luck to both of you. Uh, this is the finals of the High School National Science Bowl competition 2013. Uh, without further ado, let's begin. Good luck. Toss-up question number one is in general science, short answer. A marine biologist who is a renowned specialist on... Uh, wait, sorry, what? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the answer to that one, don't you? <laughs> Excuse me. Toss-up question number one for the high school, math multiple choice. What is the particular solution to the differential equation dy dx equals x that passes through the point zero, zero? W, interrupt. A2. Y equals x squared over two. That is correct. Nice. Visual bonus, math, short answer. Answer. Visual bonus. Visual bonus. Answer A requirement for crossword puzzles is that the grid has 180 degrees rotational symmetry, such as in the grid shown. If a 21 by 21 grid has 90 degree rotational symmetry, identify all of the following four choices that are possible numbers of black squares on the grid. 68, 70, 72, 73. 
I don't block squares. One, three, and four. All but two. That is correct. Toss up two, physics, short answer. The doping of a material with pentavalent impurities adds free electrons, which increases its conductivity. What is this new material called? A3. N-type semiconductor. Is correct. <laughs> and your bonus question is in physics, short answer. Railguns operate by running current through two parallel conducting rails that are connected by a movable conductor that is also the projectile. Additionally, there must be a magnetic field in the space between the rails that is perpendicular to the rails. If the current is 1,000 amperes, the magnetic field strength is 50 tesla, and the mass and length of the projectile are 1 kilogram and 0 0.5 meters respectively. Assuming a constant acceleration, how much time in seconds would it take to accelerate the projectile from rest to 100 kilometers per second? That's a force divided by one kilogram. So what's the distance between us? Distance, uh, 0.5 meters. 0 0.5 meters, hey. Uh, uh, 2,500 meters per second squared. Uh, how, much, how much time? Um, 5,000. 5,000. Sorry, the answer is four. Toss up three, chemistry, multiple choice. The addition of ozone to cyclohexane is best described by which of the following? <coughs> I'm sorry, W, a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition. X, an electrocyclization reaction. Y, a sigmatropic rearrangement. Z, a substitution re interrupt. A, Captain. W is correct. And your bonus question is a visual bonus in chemistry, short answer. The image is a cyclic molecule in which the colors black, gray, and red represent carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, respectively. What is the common name for this molecule, and what cation does it sequester? It's, a, what it's a what common, right? the what cation. It's a what cation. Yeah, so potassium. Okay. Wait, what, what was one? What was one? What is the name of it? County oh, uh, so let's see. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure. Ether. So it's not asking for this. Okay. No, it's not. Right. One, crown ether, two, potassium. Sorry, that's incorrect. Uh, it is 12 crown four, and the cation oh. is lithium. Sorry. Toss up four, energy, multiple choice. For the most effective passive solar design, which of the following species of trees would be appropriate to plant in front of south facing windows? W, cedar, <coughs> X, birch, Y, blue spruce, Z, Douglas, interrupt. Uh, B, captain. Why? I'm sorry, it's incorrect. I'll repeat for team A. Toss up energy, multiple choice. For the most effective passive solar design, which of the following species of trees would be appropriate to plant in front of south facing windows? W, cedar, X, birch, Y, blue spruce, Z, Douglas fir. A3. X. Is correct. And your bonus question energy is a visual bonus. Short answer. Answer the following two questions about the image. One, what cycle is being illustrated in the image shown? Two, which paths represent the power stroke and exhaust stroke, respectively? Yeah. Um, um, power stroke, power and exhaust. So power and exhaust. Wait, volume stroke is, 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 um, is when you're expanding, so it's two to three. Oh, wait, three to four is power stroke, and four to one is exhaust. Wait, what? Three to four is power, four to one is exhaust. So, so auto, auto, so auto, three to four. auto cycle. Auto cycle, three to four, four to one. Yes. One, auto cycle. Two, three to four is the power stroke, and four to one is the exhaust. That is correct. Toss up fives in biology, multiple choice. A DOE scientist removes one of the four cells that have resulted from the first two divisions of an animal zygote during early embryonic development. The animal continues to develop, but is missing a considerable number of organs and does not live. Which of the following statements can be said about the animal? W, it was a protostome. X, it was a deuterostome. Interrupt. B, captain. W is correct. And your bonus question in biology is multiple choice. Under a UV lamp, most bird species display patterning in their plumage that is not otherwise visible to the human eye. Which of the following structures in the bird eye enables birds to see UV frequencies while we cannot? W, pupils that can dilate more than those in humans. X, extra set of rods on the retina. Y, extra set of cones on the retina. Z, thicker lens.
Why is there black and white to why? Why? That is correct. Toss up six for both teams in Earth and space. Short answer. What is the name for the temperature threshold above which a ferromagnetic material will not interrupt? A captain. Fury temperature. Is correct. And your bonus in Earth and space is short answer. What downslope drainage winds are caused by cold air mass movement over an elevated plateau in winter? Wait, what down, what down downslope drainage winds over a plateau uh, in winter? Go with catabatic. Catabatic? Yes. Catabatic. Is correct. Toss up seven is in math, short answer. Given that A plus one over A equals nine, find the value of A squared plus one over A squared. B1. 79. Is correct. And your bonus in math is short answer. At 3 o'clock Thursday, the decision is made to cancel school Friday. One student is told. Two minutes later, that student texts two other students. Two minutes later, each of those two <coughs> students texts two others. Two minutes later, each of those newly notified students texts two others. If this continues and no student is informed twice, at what time will the 4,000th student be informed? Three twenty-two is correct. Nice. Toss up eight. Physics short answer. What 1964 theorem led to the resolution of the EPR paradox by demonstrating that no theory of local hidden variables could ever reproduce the predictions made by quantum mechanics? A one. Bell's inequality. That is correct. Oh, nice. And your bonus question in physics is a visual bonus short answer. Answer the following two questions about the image. Picturing the Holmdel Horn antenna located in New Jersey, famously used by physicists Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, who at the time worked for Bell Laboratories. One, what type of electromagnetic signal from all parts of the sky was accidentally detected by the device? Two, the discovery of the signal provided evidence for what scientific theory? One is microwave, two is Big Bang. That is correct. <laughs> Toss up nines in chemistry, short answer. Alcohol and ether structural groups can be protonated by the addition of a stronger acid. What is the general name of the trivalent oxygen ion? A captain. Oxonium. Is correct. And your bonus in chemistry is short answer. Mosher's acid is a chiral reagent that is sometimes used to synthesize a derivative to aid in absolute configuration determination and or enantiomeric composition of molecules that contain two specific functional groups. Name the two functional groups. I, Moser, some chiral, Moser, Moser, Moser's, Moser's, it's an acid? Yeah. Okay, and what, say, okay, and it used to do what? Uh, some chiral, something chiral is in there. Amine and imine? In, in, in estrogen, something. Alcohol and ether. Sorry, it was alcohol and amine. Toss up 10, energy, multiple choice. <clears throat> Which part of a polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell contributes most to inefficiency? W, cathode oxygen reduction reaction. X, anode hydrogen oxidation reaction. Y, electrolyte resistance. Z, contact resistance. A3. Y. Is incorrect. B captain. Z. Sorry, it was actually W, cathode oxygen reduction oh, reaction. Toss of 11s in biology, multiple choice. Which of the following is true regarding the synthesis of hormones in the human body? W, several hormones, including ACTH and endorphins, are synthesized from POMC. X, most corticosteroid interrupt? A1. W. Is correct. Visu your bonus question in biology is a visual bonus, short answer. The image shown is of an extinct species of ray-finned fish, which is among the earliest examples of ray-finned fish. Answer the following two questions about the image. One, to what class does this, does this species belong? Two, in what period did this fish most likely live?
One is Radiaceae, two is Devonian. Sorry, one is Actinotergy, and two is Devonian. Toss up 12, Earth and Space, short answer. Give by name or number all of the following four features that are formed by Aeolian processes. One, desert pavement. Two, blowout basins. Three, sinkholes. Four, mass wasting. Interrupt. A3. One and two. Is correct. And your bonus in Earth and Space is short answer. The following four processes represent theoretical local effects brought on by increasing deforestation in the Amazon basin. By number, arrange them in the most logical order to describe a positive feedback loop initiated by that deforestation that results in additional loss of rainforest. One, cooler temperatures. Two, drier climate. Three, decrease in evapotranspiration. Four, increase in surface albedo. In the most logical order? Okay, so let's see, it'll probably, cooler will probably be last, and then drier, okay, let's go with decrease evaporation, drier, surface albedo. Five seconds. Three, two, four, one. Three, three, two, four, one. Three, two, four, one. Sorry, it was actually four, one, three, two, and that is the half. The score at half is Mira Loma High School 80, North Carolina School of Science and Math 28. Okay. We'll now take a two minute break. All right, thank you very much. Do we have any substitutions at the half? Okay, are both teams ready to go? Well, then why don't we pick up where we left off? We've gone through 12 questions. We'll pick up with question number 13. It's a toss-up in chemistry and it is multiple choice. In contrast to purines, pyrimidines undergo ring cleavage and the usual end products of catabolism are beta amino acids plus ammonia and carbon dioxide. What critical step must occur in order for ring cleavage to proceed? W, a hydrogen bond is formed with water. X, the ring is reduced by NADPH. Y, the ring is oxidized by NAD+. Z, the ring is alkylated by S-adenosylmethionine. A, Captain. Y? Is incorrect. B, Captain. X? Is correct. And your bonus question in chemistry is a visual bonus, short answer. The image shown is a small molecule that can function as a second messenger. What's the name of this molecule and what enzyme synthesizes it? Cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP adenocyclase. That is correct. Toss up 14, math short answer. Evaluate the indefinite integral of x cubed times e to the power of the quantity x to the fourth plus two dx. A2. e to the power of x to the fourth divided by four plus two x plus c. Sorry, that's incorrect. B1 e to the power of x to the fourth over four plus c. So that's incorrect. The correct answer was one fourth e to the x to the fourth plus two plus constant. Um, I'd like to challenge that. Stop the clock, Stop please. The, clock. Um, the integral uh, of e to the x, x cubed e to the x to the fourth is e to the x to the fourth divided by four, and then the integral of the two he, is two x. He did read it clearly c. that the plus two was in the exponent. So the integral was the integral of x cubed times e to the quantity, quantity x, x to the fourth plus, plus two, two dx. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Start the clock, please. We will resume with question number 15, toss up biology, multiple choice. Which of the following correctly explains why the stroke volume of the human heart increases in response to increased blood volume in the heart? W, baroreceptors in the medulla cause the vagus nerve to stimulate faster beating of the heart. X, stretching of the vena cava causes interrupt. A1. X. Is incorrect. I'll repeat for team B, toss up biology, multiple choice. Which of the following correctly explains why the stroke volume of the human heart increases in response to increased blood volume in the heart? W, baroreceptors in the medulla cause the vagus nerve to stimulate faster beating of the heart. X, stretching of the vena cava causes an electrical response in the heart, increasing stroke force. Y, the stretching of muscle fibers as blood pools in the heart increases the force of muscle contraction. Z, stretching of Purkinje fibers results in more forceful beating of the heart. B, Captain. Y, is correct. And your bonus question in biology is short answer. 
which peptide hormone is responsible for controlling the pattern of smooth muscle contractions in the upper gastrointestinal tract? Substance P. Sorry, it's motilin. Toss up 16, physics, multiple choice. A string is attached to the edge of a wooden disc and then is wrapped around the circumference similar to the way a string is wrapped around a yo-yo. The end of the string is then held and the disc is positioned so that it can accelerate straight down as it unwinds from the string. Assuming that the string has negligible mass and thickness, what is the resulting acceleration of the disc during its fall? W, G over three, X, G over two, Y, 2G over 3, Z, G. B1. Y. Is correct. And your physics bonus question is short answer. Tarzan weighs 100 kilograms and is swinging on a massless vine that is 10 meters long. If he starts from a height of 5 meters above the bottom of his swing, <coughs> how much force in newtons must he exert with his arms to stay attached to the rope at the bottom of the swing? Twenty. Sorry, it's 19,600. Toss up 17, chemistry, multiple choice. While conducting an experiment on chemical X, you take both the Raman and IR spectra of the compound. You notice a band that appears in the Raman spectrum around 3,200 inverse centimeters, but does not appear in the IR spectrum. Which of the following would account for this discrepancy? W, the vibration does not involve a change in symmetry. X, the vibration does not change the dipole moment of the molecule. Y, the vibration does not have normal mode composition. Z, the vibration does not require an electron transfer. A, Captain. Y. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. B1. X. Is correct. And your chemistry bonus question is short answer. When comparing nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, data, 11B NMR differs markedly from proton NMR in that 11B is quadrupolar. What is the 11B nuclear spin? One half. Sorry, it's three halves. Toss up 18, energy, short answer. A 100 volt DC power supply is used to charge a one farad capacitor. After the capacitor is fully charged, it is disconnected from the power supply and connected across a one Henry inductor. What is the frequency of oscillation of the total energy in hertz in the circuit? A1. One hertz. Sorry, it's incorrect. B1. Two pi over 10. Sorry, it's actually zero. Toss up 19, biology, short answer. What structure of the human brain makes up over 80% of the diencephalon and serves as a major relay interrupt? B, captain. Corpus callosum. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. I'll repeat for team A. Toss up biology, short answer. What structure of the human brain makes up over 80% of the diencephalon and serves as a major relay station for most sensory impulses that reach the cerebral cortex from the spinal cord and brainstem? A1. Thalamus. Is correct. And your biology bonus question is multiple choice. <laughs> Constituents of commonly consumed beverages, like ethanol in wine, can produce diuresis. Which of the following most accurately describes the mechanism of action through which ethanol produces diuresis? W, it inhibits sodium reabsorption in the distal tubule by blocking the sodium chloride co-transporter. X, it blocks the sodium potassium 2 chloride co-transporter in the loop of Henle. Y, it inhibits vasopressin secretion by the po posterior pituitary. Z, it prevents water efflux in the proximal tubule. Z. Sorry, that's Z. Water efflux? Oh, I'm not sure. Water efflux is Z. Water efflux is oh, wherever. It's in the same. Why? Why is correct. Toss up 20, Earth and Space, short answer. 
Fossils of the first multicellular organisms come from which geologic time period? A3. Precambrian? Sorry, that's incorrect. B, Captain. Cambrian. Sorry, it's actually Vendian. Toss up 21, math, short answer. <clears throat> if x is a bounded set and y is an unbounded set, then for x intersecting with y and x union with y, interrupt A2. Bounded and unbounded. That is correct. And your visual bonus in math is short answer. A right circular cone is formed by cutting from a piece of paper the shaded That's sector. Visual bonus. Sorry, visual bonus question. A right circular cone is formed by cutting from a piece of paper the shaded sector of a circle in the image, folding so the straight edges meet and fastening them together. What is the volume of the resulting cone? Height is just like, oh no, slant height. Thirty-six pi. Okay, go with that. So, twelve pi. Twelve pi is correct. Oh, nice. Toss up twenty-two. Physics, multiple choice. Which of the following statements regarding electrons occupying negative energy states is not true? W. They are collectively called <laughs> the Dirac C. X. They are directly observable. Why? They do not react to external forces. Z, they comprise an isolated system. B1. Why? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. A1. X. Is correct. And visual bonus, physics, short answer. Given the beam of light shown, determine the index of refraction of the refracting medium. Hey, what's, what's this? Find this angle. It's sine. Right. Okay, it's just sine. Over root 34, they made it nice, good. So, five over 15. 13 square root five over 15. Sorry, it's just a square root of five. Toss up 23 is in chemistry, short answer. What is the coordination number for sodium in a face centered cube interrupt? B, Captain. 12. Sorry, it's incorrect. I'll repeat for team. A, toss up, chemistry, short answer. What is the coordination number for sodium in a face-centered cubic lattice of sodium chloride? A, Captain. Six. Is correct. And your bonus question in chemistry is a visual bonus, short answer. The molecule shown is acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol. Name the functional group bearing the hydrogen atom that will appear the second farthest downfield in the proton NMR spectrum. Alcohol. Sorry, it's phenol. Toss up 24, biology, multiple choice. Which of the following pairs of factors would be most likely to cause the lowest heterozygosity in a population? W, reduced population size, increased migration. X, increased population size, reduced migration. Y, increased migration, reduced interrupt. A1. Z. Is correct, isolation and reduced migration. Oh, nice. Your biology bonus question is multiple choice. In a population of mice experiencing natural selection, which of the following changes would you expect in the frequency of a recessive allele causing congenital blindness? W, initially decline rapidly and then decline slowly. X, initially decline rapidly and then stay at the same frequency. Y, decline slowly. Z, stay at the same frequency. W is correct. And that is the match. <laughs> Final score, Mira Loma High School, 138. North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics, 58. At this time, both Mira Loma and North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics have one loss. We will take a two minute break and then resume with the final round to determine the winner of the 2013 High School National Science Bowl competition.
As Adam said, each team has one loss. Uh, Miraloma lost in the first round of double elimination and has won seven straight since then. And uh, North Carolina School of Math and Science won four straight and then lost uh, as we just saw moments ago. Um, so this match will give one of these teams a second loss and, uh, and will leave the, the winning team as the, uh, as the champion. Um, Adam will be recognizing you. I will be moderating this round. And if all the judges are back in place, I are we ready to go? <laughs> all right, close enough. Are both teams ready to go? Okay, well, best of luck. Uh, Miraloma, North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. This is for all the marbles. Toss of question one, physics, short answer. What was confirmed by the Davison-Germer experiment? A captain. The wave nature of an electron. That is correct. Your bonus question is in physics, short answer. A particle with a mass two times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms and charge 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs enters a magnetic field along a path that is perpendicular to the field. If the particle speed is 10 kilometers per second and the magnetic field strength is one Tesla, in fraction, what is the radius of the resultant circular motion for the particle in meters? Five seconds. One times 10 to the fifth. The answer is one over 80. Toss of question, chemistry, short answer. Benzene is reacted with chlorobenzene and then with aqueous sodium hydroxide at 300 degrees Celsius and under pressure. What is the major product formed? B, Captain. Benzophenone. That is not correct. A, Captain. Paraphenyl chlorobenzene. That's incorrect. The answer is phenol. Toss up three, math, multiple choice. If f of x is a differentiable function that intersects the line y equals 3x minus 4 at three distinct points, what is the minimum number of that is an interrupt by? A2. Three. That is not correct. I will reread for team B. Multiple choice. If f of x is a differentiable function that intersects the line y equals 3x minus 4 at three distinct points, what is the minimum number of points on f such that f prime of x equals 3? w, 0, x, 1, y, 2, z, 3. b1, y. That is correct. You have a visual bonus now in math. Short answer. The image is composed of 48 unit squares. The one in the center is missing. How many different squares of integral dimensions are composed of an integral number of these 48 squares? One hundred. There are ninety-six. Toss up four, earth and space, multiple choice. Which of the falling volcanoes in Oregon has shown a magma bulge growing on its western flank since 1996? W, South Sister. X, Mount Hood. Y, Mount Bachelor. Z, Crater Lake. A3. W? That is correct. Your bonus question is an earth and space short answer. Based on the size of the magma bulge forming on the western flank of South Sister, what type of vent do geologists suspect will form if this magma bulge erupts? I'm not even sure what they're asking. I'm not even sure what they're asking. Uh, go with my caldera. No, no, wait, 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 go with caldera. Caldera. Now the answer is cinder cone. Toss up five, multi biology, multiple choice. The medical term pygopodus? 
Pagopagus. Pagopagus would be a descriptor used by a physician in reference to what medical condition? W, an infected wound. X, a tapeworm infestation. Y, conjoined infants. Z, a non-cancerous bowel lesion. A1. W. That's not correct. B, Captain? Z. Now the answer is Y. Toss of question six, chemistry short answer. You isolate a new metal. You first find that two moles of the metal react completely with one mole of hydrogen gas. You next find that two moles of the metal react completely with one mole of sulfur. What is the most likely family for this new metal? Hey, Captain? Alkali. That is correct. Uh, your bonus question is in chemistry, multiple choice. Which of the following statements is true regarding the use of fluorophores in chemistry? W. Most fluorophores are based on conjugated systems of carbon-carbon double bonds. X. The peak absorption wavelengths for most fluorophores are in the infrared region. Y. Fluorophores can be quenched by exposing them to a solvent. Z. Green fluorescent protein was the earliest example of an anaerobic protein fluorophore. Are you sure it was anaerobic? Yeah, true. true. It's true. Five seconds. Z. No, the answer is Y. Toss up question seven Earth and space, short answer. What name is used for a localized rotation of air in a horizontal plane? A3. Cyclone? Uh, that's not correct. B, Captain. 12. The answer is vortex. Toss-up question eight, physics, multiple choice. A world champion dart thrower stands at the center of a cylindrical room that is rotating counterclockwise when viewed from above. She aims a dart at a dartboard located on the wall of the cylindrical room. In an inertial reference frame, her aim would have been a perfect bullseye. What happens to the dart after it is thrown? W, it misses the bullseye to the left. That is an interrupt. B1, misses the bullseye to the right. That is correct. Your bonus question is in physics, short answer. Without slipping, but without losing energy to friction, a small ball rolls down a ramp towards a loop-the-loop -loop with a 20-meter radius. If the ball starts from rest, from what height in meters must it be released to make it around the loop if the bottom of the loop is on the ground? Twenty-eight. Uh, the answer is fifty-four. Uh, stop the clock. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a scoring issue. This is new software. <laughs> new to us, anyway. OK. All right. We're good to go? All right. And we just finished question eight. Is that right? And we're ready for yes. toss up nine. OK, sorry about that. Toss up nine, biology, multiple choice. Which of the following statements is not true regarding birds? W. Robins need to move forward faster than vultures in order to remain airborne. X, the robin's wingtips typically make a loop at the top of each upstroke. Y, the wings of soaring birds are typically much larger than those of flapping birds. Z, most songbirds must fly at least 11 miles per hour to stay airborne. A3. Z. That is not correct. B2. I. No, the correct answer is X. Toss of question 10, chemistry, multiple choice. Nuclear magnetic resonance proficiency is critical to modern chemistry. Common nuclei include proton, carbon 13, fluorine 19, silicon 29, and phosphorus 31. Which of the following is not true? W, 
Carbon-13 is more abundant than phosphorus-31. X, fluorine-19 is 100% abundant. Y, many carbon-13 experiments are proton decoupled. Z, the listed nuclei are all spin one half. A, Captain. D. That's not correct. B3. X. That is also incorrect. The correct answer is W. Toss up 11, math, short answer. Let f of x equal the natural logarithm of the quantity hyperbolic cosine of x equals hyperbolic plus. Hyperbolic cosine of x plus hyperbolic sine of x. Find f prime of 1 half. B1. 1. That is correct. Your bonus question is in math, short answer. The degree measures of the angles of a quadrilateral are integers that form an arithmetic sequence. What is the minimum possible degree measure of the smallest angle of the quadrilateral? Now the answer is three. Toss up question 12, earth and space short answer. What is the name of the channel in the ocean where the speed of sound is at a minimum and trapped sound waves travel hundreds of kilometers? A3. Pinko Klein. That is not correct. B Captain. Sound channel. It is called the so far channel. Toss up 13, energy short answer. Fumaroles are associated with what type of renewable energy source? B, Captain. Geothermal. That is correct. Your bonus question is in energy, multiple choice. After separation, carbon dioxide can be compressed and sequestered into underground geological formations. Which of the following rock types would be most advantageous for carbon dioxide injections? W, regions of karst. X, undersea basalts. Y, terrigenous breccias. Z, dolomites and marbles. Five seconds. W. No, the answer is X. Toss up 14, biology, multiple choice. Which nerve innervates the biceps brachii? W, tibial. X, superior gluteal. Y, musculocutaneous. Z, medial plantar. A1. Y. That's correct. You have a bonus in biology, multiple choice. In a typical electrocardiogram, what occurs during the QRS complex? W, momentary delay of electrical signals at the AV node. X, ventricular repolarization. Y, signals from the SA node spread through the atria. Z, depolarization signals spread throughout the ventricles. Z, that's correct. Toss up 15, physics, short answer. Who confirmed the particle-like beha particle -like behavior of light by finding scattered x-rays with a longer wavelength than those as an interrupt? A1. Pompton. That is correct. Your bonus question is in physics, multiple choice. What will be the position of an object's image when the object is located at the center of curvature of a concave mirror? W, between the center of curvature and focal point. X, at the center of curvature. Y, in front of the center of curvature. Z, beyond the center of curvature. But it said, it said concave mirror. X was at the center of curvature. X. That is correct, and that is the first half. Has to be special. Yeah. Score at the half is Mira Loma High School 40, North Carolina School of Science and Math 20. We'll take a two minute break and resume in the second half. Which is okay. All right, everybody, please take your seats and we will begin again. We should be uh, about 10 minutes from having a national champion in the high school science bowl. Uh, 12 minutes, 12 minutes. I remember the rules. Um, 
Uh, we're, there were um, no substitutions or anything, right? We've, we did have a little bit of a scoring adjustment on the score that was being displayed. The correct score is 40 to 20. Uh, fortunately, we have somebody using pen and paper to back up this newfangled computer thingy. <laughs> And so we will begin again with uh, toss-up number, we're ready? We'll begin again with toss-up number 16, which is in chemistry, multiple choice. Cyanuric acid, CYA, is used to regulate the free chlorine found in swimming pools. CYA is the heterocyclic trimer of cyanic acid for which the formula is HOCN. Which of the following best describes the structure of CYA? W an anti-aromatic structure with three hydroxyl groups. X, an aromatic structure composed of three imidic acid groups. Y, a non-conjugated triol. Z, a conjugated triamine. A captain. X. That's correct. Your bonus question is in chemistry, short answer. Cyanuric acid can tautomerize the, from its imidic acid form into another structure. What is the name of the functional group represented in this tautomeric structure? It, it, it tautomerizes. Five seconds. Amine. Uh, that is not quite correct. It is amide. Toss-up 17, math, short answer. Assuming n is an integer greater than 2, find the area in the first quadrant bounded by the curves y equals x to the n, y equals x to the quantity n minus 1, and x equals 1. B1, 1 over the quantity n squared minus n. That is not correct. A2, 1. No, the answer is 1 over the quantity n squared plus n. Toss-up question 18, energy short answer. For the 2012 London Olympics, tiles were installed on the walkways to convert the kinetic energy of the people walking into electricity. This is based on what physics that is an interrupt? B, Captain. Piezoelectricity. That is correct. Yes. Your bonus question is in energy short answer. When a one Newton force is applied to a one cubic centimeter of quartz crystal, it produces a voltage of six volts. If a woman with a mass of 50 kilograms is standing on a tile supported symmetrically by four such crystals, which are connected in parallel with a 180 nanofarad capacitor, what is the electrical energy stored in the capacitor to the nearest 10 millijoules? Forty. I'm sorry, the answer is 50. Toss-up 19, biology, multiple choice. It is your mission to collect a bone-eating snot flower worm. In which of the following locations would you find this specimen? W, on the scales of a piranha in the Congo River system. X, inside of an ice core in the Arctic Circle. Y, in an elephant graveyard in the plains of Africa. Z, on a whale carcass on the deep sea floor. A3. X. That's not correct. B, Captain. W. No, the correct answer is Z. Toss of question 20, physics, multiple choice. The Starship Enterprise is traveling from Earth towards Polaris at 0 0.7 times the speed of light C with respect to Earth when it launches a probe from the ship towards Polaris at 0.5 times the speed of light with respect to the ship. How fast is the probe moving with respect to Earth? W. 6C over 5. X. That is an interrupt. B1. 8C over 9. That is correct. Visual bonus uh, in physics. Short answer. Answer the following two questions about the image. One, what is the name of the region indicated in green surrounding each star where liquid water may exist? Two, give the spectral type of each of the three stars shown.
Habitable Zone OGM. Yes. Toss-up 21, chemistry, multiple choice. Cyclopentadiene can function as a diels alderdiene to construct tricyclic cycloadducts, but it can also function as a useful ligand for various metal ions upon monodeprotonation. This ligand is known as the cyclopentadienyl ligand. Which of the following does not describe CP? W. It can be used to readily form A to 5 sandwich compounds. X. Ring slippage may occur with certain metal ion complexes. Y. The CP to metal ion charge transfer often results in intensely colored compounds. Z. The CP ligand is anti-aromatic. A, Captain. X. That's not correct. B, Captain. Y. No, the correct answer is Z. Toss-up 22, math, short answer. What is the integer part of the logarithm base 2 of 10,000? That's in an interrupt. B1, 13. That is correct. Bonus question in math, short answer. Given the vectors i minus 2j and minus 6i plus 2j, what is the degree measure of the angle between them? So. 135 degrees. That is correct. Toss of 23, Earth and Space, short answer. What is the semi-frozen precipitation that collides and creates charge separations in, clouds, in storm clouds? A3. Hail? That's not correct. B, B Captain? Supercooled water. No, the answer is Graupel. Toss of 24, energy multiple choice. Which of the following best describes Hess's law? W, the temperature of a reaction is constant. X, the heat of a reaction is constant. That is an interrupt. B1, X. That is not correct. I will reread it for the other team. Which of the following best describes Hess's law? W, the temperature of a reaction is constant. X, the heat of a reaction is constant. Y, the enthalpy of a reaction is constant. Z, the entropy of a reaction is constant. A, Captain. Y. That is correct. You have a visual bonus in energy, short answer. The image illustrates the change in battery capacity at varying currents. If each color curve is a battery of similar size and chemistry, what physical characteristic could account for the difference in each curve? Standard reduction potential. Uh, no, we're looking for temperature. Toss of question 25, biology, multiple choice. A patient is brought in by ambulance with a contusion from a severe blow to the parotid region of the face. Upon examination, the ER physician notes paralysis of facial muscles, drooping of the angle of the mouth, and inability of the patient to wrinkle the forehead. Damage is suspected to what cranial nerve? W, CN3. X, CN4, Y, CN7, Z, CN11. A1. Y. That's correct. Yes. <gasps> Bonus question in biology, multiple choice. Dr. Moss has shingles, which is caused by the chickenpox virus that had lain dormant in the nervous system since infection. Based on the affected dermatome, where is the virus being reactivated? W, dorsal root ganglion of C4. X, dorsal root ganglion of T1. Y, ventral root ganglion of T5. Z, ventral root ganglion of C5. Dorsal root ganglion of C4, dorsal root ganglion of T1. You don't know. X. X. That is correct. 
And that is and the that, match. That is the match. And congratulations to Miraloma High School, the national champions of the High School Science Bowl of 2013. Congratulations again, Mayor Loma. At this time, we'll take a five-minute break while we set up for the award ceremony. Five-minute break, then please return to your seats. Thank you very much. And now, before we recognize the three top high school teams, what all 16 high school teams that made it to the finals They'll be receiving $1,000 for their school science department. Would all 16 of you please stand so we can recognize you? The top 16 out of our 69 high schools. <laughs> Terrific job. Our third place team you will recognize, they were last year's champion the team from Lexington High School in Lexington, Massachusetts. Welcome them, please. And Coach, nice to have you back this year. I know you weren't able to join us last year. And we went back and forth, back and forth that final match. One that you'll long remember. Our second place team is going on a five-day science trip to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park. They get a fully guided adventure tour of Great Salt Lake Park, Yellowstone National Park, and Grand Teton National Park. The adventures that await them, including seeing Old Faithful, hiking the Continental Divide, and taking a boat trip down the Snake River this is just their third year of competition. They won the national championship in 2010. This year's second place team from North Carolina, School of Science and Technology. <laughs> North Carolina. Coach Leslie Brinson, Ashwin, Tejas, Calvin, you and Sammy, congratulations on a job well done. Beautiful trophy to take home to North Carolina. Congratulations. And now our ultimate winner. They're also getting $1,000, a trophy, medals, certificates. This team is going on a nine-day science trip to Alaska. Students will explore, well, that's the Alaska team out there. Students will explore the, Co the Cooper River Delta known for its highly prized stocks and prolific runs of wild salmon. They'll experience the mystical appeal of old growth hemlock and spruce while hiking through the Chugach Natural Forest. Whitewater rafting down the Sheridan River, travel across scenic and historic Prince William Sound and the Orca Inlet, home to the world's largest population of sea otters. I think we all want to go with them and carry their bags. This year's first place winner from Mira Loma High School in Sacramento, here they are. Coach James Hill, Jacob, Jack, Daniel, Sidharth, and Sakit. What a tradition they have. 17 years coming to the National Science Bowl, 14 years, Mr. Hill, their coach, in the last six years, this is how they placed. Two, one, two, one, 
third place last year and this year winning for their third time. Congratulations, Mira Loma. We hope you've had a wonderful morning, a wonderful weekend, and you have some tremendous memories that you'll carry with you, and hopefully you will be back, either as a contestant or a parent or a volunteer judge, so you'll be part of this great tradition. The Department of Energy, the Office of Science, wants to thank all of you, your coaches and your families, a lot of parents are here, for all that they've done in their hard work and support. Special thank you to all of the volunteers who work around the clock all year long to make this happen.